Good day. Welcome to the video series analysis of airline and airport routes, schedules, and operations. This is video number two in the series, Airport Schedule and Route Analysis. My name is Lance Sherry, and I will be your tour guide for this short video. The objective of this video is to do an analysis of airport schedule and routes. And uh, we're using the Bureau of Transportation Statistics data set for airline on-time performance, AOTP, that was described in the previous video, um, both the, the content structure of that database and also instructions on how to download it. So in this video, we're going to analyze airport schedule and routes, and we're going to use a, a, a spreadsheet to do that analysis. So the first thing to do is to filter the records for your specific airport. In the previous video, you downloaded um, all of the data for all of the airports for a month for a region uh, that's organized by state. And so here, what we want to do is filter out all of the uh, flights for Richmond Airport, RIC, Richmond Airport. Don't forget you have to uh, filter for origin and destination. So we want to get all of the flights leaving Richmond and all of the flights coming into Richmond. So here's the outcome of that result. Um, my recommendation is to take the filter data and to create a new worksheet um, labeled here RIC for Richmond. And you'll notice in the uh, column L and column N, um, all of the data records there are have either the origin as RIC or the destination as RIC. So um, th the next step is to do the analysis. And what I would recommend here is to create another worksheet called RIC analysis. And here it's labeled RIC summary. So just to create a separate worksheet to do the analysis in. The first thing we want to do is count the number of flights per month. And so in the upper left-hand corner, you can see we've got um, RIC summary, number of flights per month. And then in column uh, Bravo 2, B2, uh, we're using the count function. That count function is referring back to the RIC worksheet. So it says count RIC um, exclamation mark um, A2 through A4798. And that's referring back to the RIC uh, worksheet. So with that, you can get your uh, counted RIC of 4797. The next thing is to look at the scheduled flights per day and kind of uh, get a sense for how the, uh, the daily operations play out over the course of a month at, um, at this case, uh, Richmond Airport. And so um, you can see that there's a generally a pattern starting with the 11th, the 18th, and the 25th. There's a pattern of flights. Uh, those are Saturdays. Sunday is a little bit higher. Monday, Thursday, and Friday are the highest with a, um, a, an equivalent Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sunday a little bit lower. So the pattern is Saturday, there's low operations. It increases on Sunday. Monday, Thursday, and Friday is the highest with uh, slightly lower operations on Tuesday and Thursday. So how do we get that histogram? Um, well, you can use the count if function. Um, you can also use the histogram function within Excel. My preference is to use the count if so that if you change any of your data, it automatically recalculates. If you use the histogram, you have to go and generate the histogram um, again. So in this particular case, we're using the count if and we're referring back to the RIC uh, worksheet, uh, column C. Uh, which is the day of the month. And then we uh, use this technique to um, label, to identify the count for each one of the, of the day of the month. And that's how we were able to generate the, the bar chart, the histogram you saw on the previous slide. Um, the next thing to do is to generate st the statistics uh, for the day of the week. And you can see those on the bottom right-hand side. Those statistics use the, use the daily flights per day, the, the um, number of flights per day that you just generated. And uh, the typical statistics are the min, the median, the mean, the max. So that kind of shows what the distribution looks like. And then the standard deviation and the range. The range here is defined as the maximum minus the minimum. All right, so those are the statistics for the scheduled flights per day. 
Um, so to look at the patterns of the flights per day of the week, uh, we noticed that Saturday had very low patterns, followed by increasing on Sunday. Monday, Thursday, and Friday at the highest. Tuesday and Wednesday were kind of similar to the Sunday level of operation. Um, so the, the best way to do that is to start off by identifying the days of the week. Look at a calendar and identify the days of the week associated with each day. So that blue shaded region shows that Sunday was January 5th, 12th, 19th, and 26th. Um, then you'll use, the, you'll use that data to calculate the statistics. So what's shown here, for example, is the median for Sunday. We're calculating the median for Sunday, and that is in uh, cell I. Uh, you don't have the rows here, but it's highlighted in green, the median for the cell Monday. And so you can see there, we, we just picked out that Mondays are the uh, 6th, the 13th, the 20th, and the 27th. So those are the days um, that are represented by Monday, and that's how we calculated uh, the median. You would do the same thing for the min, the mean, the max, the standard deviation, and the range. All right, the next thing to do is to look at the scheduled flights per day histogram. So we want to know for that month, what does the number of flights uh, per day look like um, in the form of a, of a histogram? And so uh, we can see looking at this that there were uh, there was one day that had, had 115 flights, another one day that had 120, two days that had 125, and then moving all the way over to the right-hand side, there were eight days that had 160, six days that had 165, and uh, 10 days that had 170. So the way to do that, again, is to return to the, um, to the data set that we previously created with the number of flights per day, and then on the right hand side is to generate the histogram and again uh, you know one way to do it is to use the count if uh, f uh, function here so we're counting the number of days in column e from e2 to e32 that have 110 115 120 and so on um, um, operations per day the, the way to define the, uh, the um, scope of the histogram, the range of the histogram, is to uh, use the min and the max that were calculated in the statistics. So if you look in the lower left-hand side, the min is 112, so we start the histogram at 110, and the max is 169, so we end the histogram with at 170. The next thing we want to do is to take the histogram and convert it into a probability mass function. What that means is it's a fancy way of saying that instead of just the number of days on the vertical axis, we want to look at the percentage of days, the percentage of days that exhibited um, those uh, number of flight operations per day. Um, so this is just a, a way of kind of aggregating and uh, making the data a little more meaningful. We can see here that there was roughly 32% uh, of the days had 170 flights, 26% uh, of the days had 160, and then about 19% of the, the days had 165 flights. Um, so we can get, kind of get a, a better sense uh, using percentages as the number of flights per day. Um, so to do that, you go back to the, uh, to the data set that you created for the histogram, and this time here you will uh, look calculate the percentage for each one of those days using the total uh, number of days on the bottom. So we had total number of days is 31, and that's in H36, and then you can use that to calculate the percentage of flights per day um, for each one of each uh, bin size in in the histogram. All right, our next thing is to look at stage length. That's the distance that the flights fly. And so um, the way to do this is to, uh, again, uh, min, median, mean, max, standard deviation, and range. And we want to look at the, um, at the data that's in the RIC uh, worksheet. 
So for the median here, we're, we're going back to the RIC worksheet and we're using column AJ, column AJ in the RIC worksheet, to, which, is, which has stage length in it, and we're calculating statistics for the stage length. So for Richmond, uh, the shortest stage length is 100. The maximum is 1482 miles. Uh, the min, uh, the median is, is around 450, and the mean is very close to that at, at 470. The, the total range from 100 to uh, 1482 is 1382, as shown in that statistic. So with that information, we can now create a histogram of stage length. And you can see that Richmond has a lot of flights that are uh, close by, uh, within uh, 500 nautical miles. Uh, certainly the most is 300 nautical miles. But there are a handful of flights that go out as far as uh, 1,500 miles uh, during the month of January. So to create that histogram, again, uh, my preference is to use the count if function. In this case, we're using the count ifs uh, to, to create the, uh, the histogram for the, the stage length. Um, so once again, we want to um, take that histogram for the stage length and uh, convert it to a probability mass function to show the percentage of flights. And you can see here on this chart the percentage of flights now uh, for each stage length. Um, this chart also has gone ahead and labeled um, the the predominant or the, the 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 dominant destinations from Richmond for each individual stage length. Um, so you can see 35% uh, of the flights are between 300 and 400 uh, uh, miles, and those are basically all of the New York airports: uh, uh, Newark, EWR, JFK, and LaGuardia (LGA). So going a little bit further out, uh, you can see we've, uh, we're tapping into Boston and Atlanta, and then you got these long-range flights to uh, Chicago, Minneapolis, Houston, and Denver on the right-hand side. All right, so same trick here. You're going to take your histogram data that you used before and calculate the percentages of flights based on that. All right, next thing is to look at unique des destinations. Excel spreadsheet has this capability of remove duplicates. Um, so if you cut and paste your uh, data set into a, uh, a kind of a, work, a working worksheet, uh, you can use the duplicate function. Once you've got that, you can um, cut and paste it back into the summary uh, or the analysis worksheet. And so you can see here um, that Richmond uh, provides um, service um, to Atlanta, LaGuardia, Charlotte, ORD, Boston, and so on down the list. Um, in addition to that, I just added the total flights and then flights per day, average flights per day. Uh, so you can see which, uh, which destination gets the most number of flights. So one of the things that pops out immediately is that Richmond is a a satellite airport that moves passengers to, to main hubs. Uh, so certainly Atlanta, uh, Charlotte, Chicago, Newark would be, uh, would be hub airports, um, which would then allow passengers to get wherever they wanted to go in the United States. LaGuardia is probably a destination airport, and that's uh, bringing passengers from Richmond to New York City, uh, you know, a, a metropolitan area that has a tremendous amount of economic uh, transactions that take place. Um, and then uh, there's the um, IAD and uh, JFK, possibly um, Detroit, um, uh, Minneapolis, and Dallas-Fort Worth for international flights. Um, so interestingly, on the bottom, there is a whole bunch of flights that are going into Florida. Uh, Sarasota, St. Pete, and Tampa Bay, probably trying to take advantage of the nice weather um, in southern Florida. Um, scheduled average ops by time of day. We'd like to know how the airline, how the airport um, operations uh, work. And you can see uh, starting at uh, 5 and uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, um, the operations uh, increase. Um, 
nine, you know, 10 o'clock has the highest number, and then 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock also have fairly high numbers of operations. Um, in addition to that, you can also separate out the operations by departures and arrivals per hour of day. And so um, the blue here shows the departures and the orange shows the arrivals. So you'll notice that a lot of uh, flights originate in Richmond in the morning. And as we expected, those, those are taking passengers to hub airports where they go international or go to other parts of the United States. And then um, when passengers return to Richmond, they're going to fly into the hubs and then later in the day uh, return to Richmond. And you see that with the arrivals later in the, in the, in the day. So the, um, this is the uh, spreadsheet to do that, uh, generate the data for that histogram. So it uses the count ifs again. And um, it's, um, again, using data from the RIC uh, uh, worksheet shown here by RIC exclamation mark um, for the, uh, the time of day, um, for the scheduled time of day of the arrival of the scheduled time of day of the, of the departure. So that's how you get your departures and arrival data. You have to make sure that, you're, that it's an arrival and that you're looking at the arrival schedule or if it's a departure, that you're looking at the departure schedule. So to look at the total ops of day, um, column P here um, is the departures plus the arrivals, and then the average ops per hour is the total ops divided by, by 31, and that's how you would get that statistic. And the last thing to do is just to have a little fun and look at the actual um, uh, routing the way the tail numbers are coordinated by airlines. And a little exercise here is to find a tail number that operates a shuttle route. So you can see um, in the example here at the top, American Airlines um, <clears throat> is um, operating um, from Richmond to Charlotte. Um, and, and then back again. Uh, so Charlotte to Richmond, and then uh, Richmond to Charlotte, and then Charlotte to Richmond. So just back and forth all day long. And then on the bottom end is Delta Airlines, and um, this is a LaGuardia, Richmond, Richmond, LaGuardia, and, and so on operation. At the end of that uh, day, um, they go LaGuardia to Detroit to, to Richmond. So just to have a little bit of fun look, following the tail numbers around and see how the airlines schedule their flights. So to summarize, uh, analysis of airport schedule and routes, uh, we've shown how to do that analysis. We've shown what the analysis is um, and um, with uh, 13 different data sets and then uh, how to form the analysis in the Excel spreadsheet. So uh, enjoy this, uh, this analysis and the next one we'll look at will be airport operations. So thank you.